what we saw was that digital was enabling businesses to test ideas and see how the market would react. And actually, quite a few of those ideas, those new, new products will last long after COVID has passed. Hello and welcome to the Ecom Ops Podcast. We believe that there is more than enough content focused on e-commerce marketing and not enough content celebrating the real heroes of e-commerce, those running the operation. Each week, we find and interview an e-commerce operations expert to share the secrets behind how some of this industry's most exciting businesses are run. I'm your host, Norbert Strappler, the CEO of Sync Spider. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ecom Ops podcast. Today I'm talking to Jackie from Shop Epi. Hey Jackie, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. That's great. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for being with me. Um, Jackie, um, let's start with how did you get into e-commerce? Well, I, I definitely wasn't a tech person or a retail person, but basically yeah. I was a person that cared very much about my community where I live. And what I could see was that the high streets and the small businesses were struggling. Mm -hmm. At the time I was working uh, as an academic and I was commuting. When I got home, my shops weren't open, so I couldn't easily support them. So I felt that there was a need for a platform where I would be able to spend my money locally and to bring things together. It felt crazy to me that it was easier to shop from a faceless warehouse in the middle of China than it was my own local high street. I couldn't understand how in the evenings I could see everything else but where I lived. So I created Shop Appy in 2016, the idea being that you could buy from all your different local shops and then you could click and collect after the shops had closed. And I usually put the uh, click and collect points into pubs because I really like gin and wine and shopping. So it was a good combination for me. Obviously, during COVID, uh, we added home delivery and uh, just at the beginning of the lockdown. And now uh, we have a platform that's available in over 100 towns and uh, across the UK. And just it makes it easier for people to spend where their hearts are. Mm -hmm. That's great. So actually, Shop Appy is a local marketplace, um, uh, like like a little Amazon um, for store owners that have a physical store and don't have a web shop. Actually, yeah. Well, actually, for those that have websites as well, because uh, websites, if you have your own website, you can obviously market everywhere. This is very much about local community. So if I'm visiting a town, I can go and collect. So it keeps everything hyper-local. But also as a resident, I could be working late. I could be scared about going outside because of COVID. I can still support my local community. And that is very difficult to do. And if you or everybody ha can have their own website, but also use this as a local channel to get into their local community. The advantage really is the customer. I'm quite selfish. I came from a customer perspective. I do not want to go down 20 different websites to go and shop in my high street. I do not want to Facebook message my individual shops about things I like and what I'd like to buy. And I don't want to hang on a telephone uh, for my local greengrocer to wait for a fruit and veg box. Mm -hmm. So what this does is bring a seamless online platform to uh, a place to enable people to support just like Amazon does in that you could buy lots of different things from lots of different suppliers and as a customer go through to the end point and order and not realize that you may be supporting 5, 10, 15 businesses. For us though, part of that journey is also the discovery piece. So weirdly, we are not an e-commerce site that wants everybody to go shopping online. We want to use online to influence footfall. We want to see people use it and then go in person as well. That's great. Um, there are different strategies for marketplaces um, that I am aware of. Um, the one strategy is that the marketplace is really the merchant and the reseller of the goods um, with, uh, with, with, with commission in place. Um, and the other strategy is that, the, uh, that every m vendor that is selling on a marketplace uh, is connected via, um, um, let's say, Stripe, uh, merchant uh, feature, um, and, and gets the money directly. What is your 
um, um, go to market here? Are you the merchant or are you a real marketplace where everyone has their own um, uh, terms of service and their own payment providers and so on? We we are the marketplace, so we go through one gateway. So we use Stripe, and everything is is brought together and consolidated that way. So we actually work with everybody having a one seamless experience rather than separate checkouts or or or, or very sort of fragmented. Um, payment systems and everything else. We actually just want to bring the whole thing together. So we mm-hmm. act, but we also act as a campaigner for localism. What I've got to really emphasize is a lot of it, I would term it as browsing e-commerce is what, what it is. Mm-hmm. So um, Amazon is a very transactional, you know, find the product, get me the product, that's it. Whereas our journey is very much you landing in a place, discover the businesses, then maybe you want to buy products. Maybe you want to book things. Maybe you want to ring to order. Not every business has to necessarily sell online on Shop Appy. Some businesses still want you to ring them, to order something uh, more remotely or to have a conversation, to book something. So whilst there is the online e-commerce part, we have to understand that lots of small businesses aren't necessarily wanting to have that uh, detached experience and still want to meet people. And interestingly, mm-hmm. through uh, lockdown, when in the UK there were uh, elements where we were between lockdown and uh, people st- felt very, very nervous about going into store. So we interviewed our shops and 90% of them said people were coming in to spend, but they were coming in for less time. So they wanted to come in and out. So we called it the, the trend of the short stay shopper. And what we saw was much longer browsing going on, on online. And then the, the actual physical trip was very, very quick. Now, mm-hmm. if that happens, then the pre-browsing becomes significantly uh, part of that customer journey. And that's something we see going forward, that people are going to want to investigate the local area more and plan, think about how, how many shops they're going to go to, evaluate their own risk and go shopping. Yeah, well, this is really a trend that we that we also see that a lot of um, sessions on the the, the web shops and, and also marketplaces get much longer than they used to. Um, that the experience um, is is very important for users. What e-commerce stack do you use? Magento. Magento. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and and do you have some kind of marketplace um, uh, plugin there, or uh, did you develop it yourself? We do use plugins um, mm-hmm. as well to, to support us with lots of different parts of uh, Shop Happy that cater for things. For our point, it's the, the access for the store owners has to be very easy. And uh, one of the biggest, uh, probably the, the perspective I had, because I wasn't from a tech background or an e-commerce background, was that when, um, when I had come up with the idea that there should be this thing, I don't know how this thing happened, but there should be this thing where I live, is I brought my shopkeepers in to my living room with the developers and they speak different languages. Yeah, and they do. <laughs> so we had to, and I didn't speak the developer language. Now, unfortunately, I do sometimes speak the developer language, but most of the time I don't. Um, and I focus on this business that is scared of technology and or, or, or doesn't understand. It's a different term. They're, they're passionate about what they sell, their books, their their, you know, their fruit, their produce, mm-hmm. whatever, that's their passion. So how do we make it easy? So a lot of the work was in the beginning was actually creating a portal where a business could access it with the, the smallest possible device, the cheapest possible device at the quickest possible pace. And uh, that's what we designed. So your vendors are able to log in to your um, backend and yeah. create the products themselves. Yeah. Maybe upload products. Yeah. yeah great. And they see and the they orders. Can add vouchers, and they can add vouchers. They can add services. They can add events. They can do a lot on the back end. That's great. That's actually a lot of, of things that um, vendors still can do. How many vendors do you serve at the moment? We serve several thousand uh, vendors oh, wow. now. Yeah. That's great. We, we, That's grew, uh, we grew exponentially, um, yeah. particularly from March, because what we did was that we had, um, obviously we were operating Shop Happy town by town. That takes time because you get to know the place and how it's going to work. And you're also, uh, you know, communicate with people back then, pre-COVID, which now feels decades ago, but pre-COVID, 
with people that were generally quite resistant to digital. Mm -hmm. You'd have the businesses that had really gone on to digital, but there was a very low percentage of those. Obviously, COVID accelerated that digitalization. Um, obviously, there were grants as well businesses could use to try and get themselves more technological because digital was the only way they could continue to trade. Mm -hmm. um, but at that point, we had already developed the delivery side. So we were able to say to all the businesses on our platform, you can trade. You can continue to trade. Home delivery is here. There's no, no problem because we'd organized that. But then we offered free support to businesses um, for, for a good few months because my perspective is uh, Shop Happy isn't a tech business. It's a business about creating better places to live and work. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. That's so absolutely. we stick to our purpose and our purpose is that. Therefore, these businesses are a fundamental part of that. So what I did in March was actually look at our purpose and thought, you know what, if we don't do something now that's pretty brave, but also kind of crazy and offer everything for free, but if we don't do that, our purpose of creating vibrant places is, is gone because yeah. these businesses won't survive it. So yeah. we were able to extend the support and it was, it was great because we saw some amazing adaptations on the site. From We had a guy who ran a bar who uh, makes, obviously makes brilliant cocktails and um, we persuaded him to do cocktail kits, which he could deliver. And we had a guy who then was zooming in and showing you how to make mojitos we had a crooner who obviously couldn't make money um, doing his crooning, his singing. And so basically you could book him to croon to you if you were having a dinner date in lockdown. Um, and we just we even had a pizza cafe. And the pizza cafe had lost his ability, to obviously, to get people in, serve his pizzas. So he sold uh, the ingredients for the pizza and uh, people could make their own pizza and then they shared it. And then, it, of course, that went on social media, that went onto the website. So what we saw was that digital was enabling businesses to test ideas and see how the market would react. And actually, quite a few of those ideas, those new, new products will last long after COVID has passed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um How do you earn money with the marketplace? Do they pay uh, commissions to you or is it um No, we don't fee? agree. We don't agree with commissions. We don't like commissions, so we don't yeah. charge commissions. Uh, no, we, we basically, people join us. It's a, it's a kind of membership community. Mm -hmm. So everybody can join. It's very low cost. Um, you know, the price to join Shop App, it starts at three pounds a week. Okay, yeah. So you're talking about a cafe latte. What you're drinking now, that's what it, what it costs to be part of Shop Happy and have one of those a week. You're part of that, this community. And it's a growing community of businesses that support each other and we can support them. But overall, what we're trying to do is use e-commerce to change behavior mm -hmm. so that we don't just want online shoppers. We want local shoppers. We want people to understand that the most environmentally sound, socially sound, ethical decision you could make would be to walk out of your house and go into a physical business. And I think this and is also something that sets you apart from your competition. Because um, Marketplace is intended to, um, of course, are there to make money and they all have some kind of commission-based um, um, sales process. And of course, they are trying to sell a lot um, to uh, the broad audience um, and not to care about physical and local um, experience while you just take your membership fee, which is, of course, absolutely okay because you need to make the platform, you need to earn the money, of course, um, but you try to keep the people local. And this is really um, a new approach in e-commerce, I think. Yeah, it, it, we've always felt like we're in a bit of blue water in that space. And... Um, There are, obviously, during COVID, there have been a lot of platforms that have come up that are delivery and some local marketplaces as well. But we do feel we've got... Our commitment is to the town centre, to the, the place and yep. the, the businesses, the community organisations within it and how they work so we can inspire footfall. For a local business, they don't want to feel like they run a warehouse. They created a local shop to meet people so actually, the thought of just being purely online is not attractive to most local shops. 
So you have to have, you know, what we chose to do was work on a platform that could inspire that, that local visit, could enable people to get to know the business and see the human face. The other thing is that the, you know, I've done a lot of e online shopping in my time. Um, it's a pretty boring, faceless, transactional activity. It doesn't have any anything like the satisfaction of discovery and serendipity and conversation. So that's where we're heading. We want it to be much more immersive. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully with you um, because um, when we had in Austria the first lockdown back in March last year, um, we decided from our company to make a local marketplace as well. Uh, we did this within two or three weeks. Um, it was, was easy for us because we had a lot of developers. Um, and uh, it's, it's nearly this, uh, a similar case. So our marketplace is really focused on one region just that, so the region where we have our company based, um, and it's not intended to be extended um, to to entire Austria. So we're just serving um, this very local um, uh, region here with um, I don't think, I think fifty thousand people or something in, in the radius that we are covering, and um, and we have one hundred twenty stores there. But it's the same um, the same concept actually. So to to have those local stores able to sell online while the stores, the physical stores need to be closed because of a lockdown mm. or something like this. And we still are there and we still are serving. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's an ex extreme different situation also for the store owners because they all um, needed to learn how to deal with um with an online platform. Yeah. Most of them didn't have an e-commerce store before and they needed to learn um, how to, to, to create products online, how to take pictures. Um, how do you help your local um, um, physical store owners to, to learn how they can upload products the right way or how to even take pictures? Yeah, so what we what you have to see is that it's a process and you can't yeah. get to the end destination. If you're in control of your store and you can create the most amazing images and everything for your store, you're going to create great brands and work with brand marketers. But when you're talking about a town, you have a massive difference in technological, technological ability, uh, creativity and all of that. And I think you just have to accept that this is a yeah. process. Not every picture will be perfect. Not no. every, um, but what, what it is doing is starting a journey for those businesses to then look at it. So we have uh, our focus again, probably because I'm not from the tech background, is very much about people. So we have a very big team that work with our local businesses and get them to. You know, we put a human face on technology. We put a friendly face on technology of basically, let's have a look at what you can do and have you thought about doing this? And we have regular meetups and we have a, a quite a strong community. And what we also see is them helping each other. So um, nice. we don't get brilliant photos uh, first time. You might It might take months for that sort of learning. And, and a, but, we have, but we also offer, obviously use image libraries particularly for food photography, because over time I've seen some pretty pretty shocking food photography um, that we've needed to look at and say, you know, we probably need to give you some images that you can use, license, you know, from our licenses for these, these kind of things. So food photography, we can give images, but also uh, we have people in our network, because this is about the whole of a town, there's usually a photographer. Mm -hmm. So then the photographer might offer to provide a little bit of support. So it's amazing how these networks can actually really work and help each other. So that's, uh, great, that's yeah. what we do. But just, I think what this is, is small steps towards change. In the UK, and I can't speak for uh, Austria, but in the UK, there was about a 10-year lag on the high street. So the high street was declining. Amazon was whacking it to hell. And um, that's because Amazon provided all of the convenience you could ever want, everything in one place, so easy, only a day, da da da, or yeah. a few hours. Okay, how can you compete with that? And obviously, it was becoming more and more of a gap between the, the those that have and those that have not the tech. And so, what you have to 
there's a great Chinese proverb, which is when a when a leader gets too far ahead of his troops, he starts to look like the enemy. And in my view, that's where technology was about four years ago when we started yeah. Shopapoli five years ago, was technology looked like the enemy and not yeah. the opportunity. I think COVID has completely made it people realize it's the opportunity. And now what it is is going to be about how do we make the most out of this opportunity. I think this is something that is in nearly, nearly every country um, that the digitalization um, made us such a big um, jump. Um, in, um, we, I think we won several years, years in, in, in digitalization um, because of COVID. Everyone needed yeah. to think about that. Everyone needed to um, go somehow online and find a solution that works for them. Um, There is one thing that I'm really curious about. Um, a marketplace covers, of course, a lot of products, a lot of local uh, products in your case. Um, is the pricing strategy relevant for you or for a brand? Or is it uh, accepted from the buyers, actually, that the local stores typically charge a bit more than um, than than Amazon, for instance, because um, this is what I have seen the big problem in online um, purchases that um, you are so comparable. And there's a small local store, a physical store that sells, let's say, um, T-shirts of a specific brand and these t-shirts are a bit more expensive than if they would purchase it on Amazon. Um, does it make a difference now for buyers or do they say, okay, let's support a local store? So uh, 60% of us since COVID are making more environmental choices. So I think there's been a growing awareness of ethics and sustainability in the community. Yeah. Um, we have seen in the UK a huge growth towards localism and positive sentiment towards localism. And I think that possibly happened in that first lockdown where our normal global supply chains were under threat and everybody started to worry and suddenly they couldn't get supermarket deliveries and their local corner shop had what they needed. So there was a sudden switch of discovery to local high streets. Price strategy is really interesting. The perception is that online's cheaper. It isn't. It isn't in so many ways. Often yeah. you find uh, amazing deals, but if you actually dig deep, the deal's terrible. And um, so what we try to focus on is, first of all, debunking some of the myths. Also, we need to change the psychology. You don't ask why something is expensive. You ask why something else is cheap. Because if it's cheap, someone in the supply chain paid for that. Yeah. Whether it was in compromising their safety or, um, you know, compromising uh, their health uh, and their well-being, it's cost somebody to give you something cheap. So a lot of what we do is about campaigning to join the dots. When you buy from a local business, you're investing in your community and you're making sure that where you live stays special, unique, safe, full of ideas, you know, a nice place to live. So it is a growing campaign towards localism we need to champion because this race to the bottom does not help anybody. And years back, right, you know, right at the beginning of Shop Appy, when it was just kind of an idea in a PowerPoint slideshow I was showing at businesses, um, there was a, sh a shoe shop I spoke to. And she said, I don't want to go online because if I go online, people will compare my prices. Yeah. And I said to her, don't you think people compare your prices anyway? You're online, even if you think you're not. Because someone takes a picture, looks online and finds the cheapest deal. If the customer has got that psychology, you're never going to win them anyway. So actually, the key thing is that I, when I go on Amazon, it's clutter. It's credible clutter. And you can go race to the bottom of the cheapest possible deal that might come from the farthest possible point trash the planet, never mind. Who cares if it's made of plastic? Who cares if a kid did it? Just get it to me. Get it to me in a few hours. What kind of world is that? 
So we really need to like we need to break it completely. It's a, re- a really great explanation um, about about that, and uh, I really like that um, that approach um, of being more localized. Um, we, we see it. Uh, we see an increase here in general. So even in our customer base, uh, where we have a lot of um, marketplaces that we serve, um, that that we get a lot of local sales um, coming in in marketplaces just because of that. Just because that people, um, and I'm not talking about the majority, the majority yeah. still buys the most cheapest product at the most cheapest place with the with the best service and free shipping and everything so this is still the majority but um people getting more and more um thinking about the planet about the future about local sales and uh, and, and 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 providing support to local vendors and i think this is a good turnaround that actually Came with COVID. Yeah, if, if there I think partly. I, I think it was coming happen. before. And why? Really? I think it, yeah, um, there was some research done by the Industry Research Institute around um, people who preferred to shop local, and it was something like fifty-five percent of people said they preferred to shop local. And out of that, it was a growing community of younger people who were interested in the independent, the brands that had more provenance perhaps because of all the kind of climate change, climate emergency stuff that was going on pre-COVID. I was doing conferences about climate emergency and how, you know, shopping local is carbon neutral as much as possible. You know, this is a good behaviour. And I think there was a growing interest and desire. The problem was that it still wasn't ticking a convenience box. So if you want people to change behaviour, The first start is the realisation that it's probably a better thing to do, to do this positive behaviour, but then you have to make it easier. And so convenience and online convenience then steps up and then then it's kind of unbeatable at that point. The price thing is is a complete uh, distraction because actually you can get so much cheaper in your local high street. You just have to look. I mean, it's there. Um, but we are deluded often by uh, and and duped into thinking that because it's yeah. online, it's cheaper. I've spoken to many businesses that say we charge more online than we do in our physical stores. Not through Shop Happy, I might add, because we don't charge commission. Yeah, that's great. Uh, it's really a, a good concept. Do you have any troubles when you go to a local store and ask them to join? Uh, so do the people uh, start right away and say, hey, this is a good idea, I'm in? Or is there still, um, uh, are they still tr- struggling with, uh, oh, there are additional fees to, to pay? And uh, uh, I mean, it's not more than a, a cell phone contract yeah, to, to list mm-hmm. on your platform. Or as yeah. you said, a, a, co- a cup of coffee per week. Um, how, 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 how do you sell? Is, is this an uh, easy process it, or still? No, it's people? completely mixed. And it's got, yeah. I must admit, it's, it's got easier uh, since, uh, since COVID um, because I think the, real, you know, the realization of digital. But no, it's, it's, always, it's always very mixed. You'll get people that see the technology as the enemy. I'm too busy. Um, I've got my own things to do. I can't afford to pay any percentages. I'm busy enough. Um, every every possible reason not to change. And we constantly work on how can we get people to change the mindset because this isn't about you as a business. It's about mm-hmm. your customers. And your customers are, find, are wanting to spend locally and you are putting a barrier up to that. Yeah. So... Uh, and I think some of that is also uh, the businesses realizing what an important part they play in community. So it could be, it might be that they think, well, I'm just this, I'm just a shop. I come in, I open up, I do my business, I go home, that's it. But actually, for your local people, your shop is an indicator of how vibrant their community is. It makes them feel happy when they go past it. So they want you to survive you have an important part in surviving. That's the most important thing you've got to do is stay where you are and keep yeah. trading. So um, the the customer is at the center of what we say and that's the journey we, we ask. And we always ask customers, what do you think about this idea? Would you like this in your community? And of course, they always do. So we just need the customers and the businesses to be thinking more aligned. But no, it never is easy. It's not Change isn't easy, but change we must. 
That's great. What role does automation play in your um, operations or in your marketplace? Do you have any kind of connectors to allow um, your users to upload products from their local POS software or uh, via CSV files or what else? And then how do you submit the orders? Is there any need for, oper uh, for automations or is this something you are thinking about? And we do have quite a few automations. We have, you know, obviously uh, communication automations, automations in relation to our deliveries and collections and automations uh, in, you know, being able to bulk up loads and things like that, standard stuff. But with Shop Appy, we've, we've been connected to our business community and our place community for five years. So our entire roadmap is shaped by the kinds of things they'd like to see that would make things easy. So we always, always are developing and looking at automations. And we also look at it in terms of our own structures and our CRM systems and things like that. So things talk to mm -hmm. each other. My view is if you could, if it's if it's boring, automate it, do the exciting stuff. So we try to automate as much as possible so that we can focus on the more valuable things, which is our team talking to people. And, you know, helping them stay engaged. Yeah, I understand. Um, what will you be focused in the next year? So uh, the fo our focus in the next year is getting back to Shop Appy's happy place, which is being the shop window that influences football. Um, so we've, we've, over the last year, been the much more of a transactional marketplace. Mm -hmm. But we want to go back to being that window which enables people to think what oh I could go to an event I could book a table I could buy something and get getting that football back and we're very much part of it I'm on personally I'm on the high street task force for the government which is all about regenerating I'm also on um I'm also on sorry about that disturbance there um I'm on the high street task force I'm also a senior fellow on the institute of place management so we have a lot of stuff going on in the UK about regenerating town centres. And we lobby a lot as well on behalf of businesses. We work with associations and campaigning for level playing field for small businesses. So I see our, our job in the next year is helping our communities recover from what has been mm -hmm. horrific for them. And uh, seeing also if we can get more smaller, newer businesses back into the high street. The great thing about lockdown one was 85,000 new businesses started in lockdown one in the UK. Oh, wow. I mean, that to me, you know, they always say uh, necessity is the mother of creativity. But there's a lot of entrepreneurship in, in this country. Yeah. And I'm looking for, I think there's also been a growing design, a desire to go into high streets again. We're seeing uh, places report that they've had more inquiries about uh, property, commercial property. I think we're at the beginning of a renaissance for the high street. And I'm, I'm really excited to be part of it. That's great. Yeah. Um, last question for today. Who has taught you the most about e-commerce in your career? <laughs> who has taught me more expert? I would say um, sorry that that I, I hadn't noticed that uh, as a question right who has taught me <laughs> most about e-commerce I think predominantly I look at my developers yeah. to teach me about it my focus is place and business and people and I come to them with the problem and they tell me about the solution and I've had loads of you know loads of conversations around user experience and things because we're pushing against the the norms, you know, what, what else, you know, product, transaction, dull, but that's what most e-commerce is. Um, so we don't do it that way. We do it slightly differently. We do it quite differently. Yeah. Um, and I listen to see how I can make it as easy as possible for people to understand what we do. Um, and I, I work on, I always get more talented people to do what, what I'd like them to do. And they advise me and then I listen. So I say my developers. That's great. Thank you very much, Jackie, for your time. It was really a pleasure talking to you and to learn so much. Um, what I could take out from this is uh, really um, think more local. So even when I purchase things online, don't go for the cheapest, go for the most local one to save the environment, to save um, the, 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 the area where you live in, to, to keep that 
com- the level of comfort um, that we have, that there are a lot of local stores um, that we can support and that we gonna miss if everything goes online i know the trend is there um but that that that, that everything is going to be purchased online and we're still in an an, an, an absolutely um uh, exponential curve uh, where businesses are online but it still can be local and well also it and the future isn't always linear yeah it isn't absolutely um and and also what i what i can take out here is um Make technology not your enemy. <laughs> yeah. So it it is there. We live and we need to deal with that. And even for those who are not yet selling online, it's not that hard to go online with a store or to go and participate to a marketplace like yours um, and start selling online. The people, the users, we we go online and we purchase and look online already. And if we can do this on a platform that gives us the possibility to purchase locally, but be online, this will help everyone. And it's not just to um, be mad about marketplaces um, like Amazon or so. Um, If we as a a, um, salesman or uh, as, as, a, as a physical store are not selling online it's our guilty that uh, the people cannot purchase with us yeah absolutely you, you've us. got all the opportunities in front of you and it's not that hard yeah. to get involved thank you very much Jackie was a thank pleasure you. great <laughs> time bye bye thank you bye bye and that's it for this episode of the Ecom Ops podcast If you enjoyed listening and would like us to find and interview more e-commerce operations experts, please search for EcomOps Podcast in your favorite podcast listening app and then subscribe, rate, and review. Until next time.